Hey, what's good YouTube and welcome to games where we only gain a man PO gang You guys already know how we're coming man and in today's video I'm gonna be showing y'all the best slasher build in NBA 2k20 and before I even get into anything If any of you guys watch me back in NBA 2k19 You guys will know that my slasher was a demon in the paint bro Like he was literally a goaded build matter of fact. Let me just start. Let me show y'all a little bit of what my slasher did Bruh all right, I'm gonna stop showing off now. I think y'all get the point. My slasher build is overpowered, bro. I know what my slashers, man. I've been a slasher since 2K16, so I know how my slashers go, bro. So if there's anyone you're taking slasher advice from, please make the correct decision and make it me. But anyways, man, obviously for the skill breakdown, for the position, actually, we're gonna go with small forward. Obviously, that's the build I went with last year, the year before that. Every single year, small forwards are constantly the best slasher builds. And for the skill breakdown, you're obviously gonna wanna go with the one with the majority of the slasher. You're gonna wanna be able to go up hard in the paint, bro. If that's not what you're intending to do, don't make a slasher build, simple, all right? Now, for the physical profile, you're gonna wanna split it evenly between vertical and agility, because as a slasher, you need a high vertical to be able to jump high and not get blocked, etc. And you're gonna want a high speed so you can you know be fast bro like as a slasher a lot of people think that you know you don't need to be that fast necessarily just be big body up in the paint bro that's not true don't listen to those people man half the people in the community do not know what they're talking about when it comes to slashers as a slasher you need speed and you need a high vertical if you want to be able to take it up in the paint and not get blocked by bigger defenders now for your finishing obviously you're gonna want to max all of that out just to get all the shooting badges possible except for post hook because you don't need a high post hook and you could still get your 30 finishing badges so you could go ahead and save yourself a few caps right there for your shooting you're only going to want to upgrade your mid range and your three point if you want to upgrade your free throw that's up to you i personally don't feel the need to upgrade my free throw because this isn't going to be a prime and rec build for me i'm mostly just going to be playing bark park on it but if you think you are going to be playing rec which a lot of you guys are just go ahead and take out some of the attribute caps from the three pointer or midi or whatever you feel necessary and go ahead and throw it in the free throw Honestly, if you, have, if you have a three free throw of a 70, you're going to be all right. Playmaking, ball handling, passing, accuracy, you're going to want to max those out. And for your defense and rebounding, I personally think that you want to max out your interior defense, perimeter defense, lateral quickness is good at a 60. Your steal should be good at 71, block 73. But as for your offensive rebound, you're going to want to go ahead and upgrade that straight to a 60. And here's why, bro, because as a small forward, well, you're going to, you might miss, chances are you might miss a few layups here and there. And you're probably going to be guarding going up against the guard because this build right here, it's intended to be guarding guards right now, point guards, shooting guards, and possibly even other small forwards. So if you upgrade your offensive rebound up to a 60, which it is right now, bro, you're going to be grabbing offensive rebounds like crazy over these guards, man. That's literally one of the biggest reasons why my slasher was so overpowered last year. I had a 6'10 slasher and he literally would snag every single missed shot, like every single layup that I miss over a guard. I would just grab my own rebound, put it back up, green light, bro. It was literally impossible possible to guard my slasher last year like straight up now for the height they don't let you go with six foot ten this year as a slasher on small forward unfortunately that's too bad bro but six foot eight is where it's looking at this year in 2k17 i made a six foot eight slasher he was a goat bro he was literally unguardable but uh the best part about six foot eight and not going the big reason why i didn't go six foot nine is because it puts your driving dunk down to a 91 and as a slasher you're gonna want to have a high driving dunk bro it's just a part of your game style the way you play your game you're gonna need a high driving dunk for your weight throw that all the way down to 185 don't question this bro there are so many slashers i see making the big mistake of maxing out their weight or not minimizing it as a slasher you want to put it down to the lowest because it makes you faster and more hard to guard it makes you so much more of a slippery player and like it's just so much easier to guard someone who is you know big and bulky and can't really run fast compared to someone who can sneak by you get easy blow bys from you into the paint bro it, it trust me man if your guy is light it'll make your life a whole lot easier and for your wingspan max that out bro once again i see so many slashers making the mistake of minimizing their wingspan bro like don't listen to any of these youtubers that tell you to minimize it or keep it the same max out your wingspan bro that's how my slasher never gets blocked bro he literally never gets blocked it is so rare maybe if i'm up against a rim protector and he has the perfect angle behind me i might get blocked but other than that my vertical's maxed my vertical's not maxed right now it's really high though my you know my driving dunk's really high bro if you have that thing and your wingspan is maxed and you have a really fast speed so people can't catch up to you that easily you will be unblockable man you will be unguardable in the paint and this year 2k said that they made point guard paint defense a lot worse 
So, bro, Slashers is looking like an overpowered build this year, man. We're going to see, though. I want to see a, how many people are making a Slasher build this year. Comment it down, bro. Slasher gang, we out here strong, bro. Another big misconception people have when they make Slasher builds is when they're making one. They want one that could do it all, bro. And unfortunately, let me tell you, man, there is no Slasher build that is going to be able to be dominant in the paint and be dominant on the 3.9, etc. Unless the game is broken like it sort of was last year with the 3.9 and all that. But if you're going as a slasher, man, you need to go heavy on the paint, bro. Or else you're going to be going up weak in the paint. You're going to be going into the paint like you're a shot creator. You're going to be saying, ah, oh, let me not take this layup. Let me play it safe, bro. As a slasher, you want to go in hard, man. Get your layups up. Get your dunks up. But like I said, man, as long as you have your wingspan max, get a nice vertical and stuff, you will be so much harder to guard. It doesn't matter, bro. You could literally have an IQ of 5. As long as you know how to go to the paint and hold square in a good timing and a good, you know, with a good nice angle and you play it smart, you do you do the, you know, you do the decent play, anybody should be able to score with this build right here. It is so easy. It is so dominant. Bro, I can't wait, man. I know my slasher last year was a freak of nature, bro. So I can't even wait to imagine him this year. I just, I'm just so excited to put out some content, man. I'm so amped up for 2K20. Let me know what you guys think about this build down in the comment section below. But anyways, it's been your boy Gaines here, man. And I'm out.